Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Moltrap here, and I have plugged a number of gigabytes of RAM and a GPU into a large russet potato in order to bring you some high quality StarCraft action here. This is MSL 100 number 67, and even though the video quality may be potato, I'm expecting some like delicious garlic french fries quality gameplay here. This should be should be really really fun. I was just saying in the last game that I casted, I hope that this MSL 100 series uh, brings a more of a variety of players and they have delivered big time. Finally, we're going to get to see a couple players I was hoping to find some vods of. This is Oof versus Yellow. Oof versus Yellow. This is going to be I'm so excited about this. There's Oof right there, by the way. I love Oof is his full name, uh, or his full ID, I guess. Um, and this is Yellow. He's going to be the red Zerg in the bottom left. And there is Yellow. So let me give you guys some context here. If you've never heard of these guys, right now this is, play this is played in 2003. And by the way, this is the finals. This is the finals. I looked it up this time. Of the TG Sambo MSL. Uh, played in late 2003. So this is basically... Okay, like, let me put it this way. Yellow has been the most powerful Zerg player, winning gold or silver for almost every tournament for the last two years, right? He's the only guy that's been able to challenge Boxer a lot in a significant way during you know, the early 2000s, like 2000, 2001, 2002. Boxer was still at his prime. He was he was the man to beat, right? Um, so Yellow has been a challenger for Boxer. He's been the strongest Zerg. Um, it, it's called the Storm Zerg because of his gameplay, but he is now going up against Oov. Now, at this point in time, in 2003, Oov has not won a single thing, and uh, Oov would go on to have a ridiculous career. He was came to be known as the Cheater Terran because he basically invented modern macro. Uh, he invented macro. Modern macro has even been taken a, a step above uh, what Oov was capable of. But he invented macro. He invented the macro style play. And uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. Please correct me. This is kind of my understanding. I was not watching StarCraft at this time, but from the legends I've heard that Oov was basically the, the person that, that invented a style of play that, that revolved more around playing with lots of units. And um, he's called the Cheater Terran because, you know, it was like you'd, you'd scroll away from his base and then go back and a minute later you'd have like twice as many units and you're like, where do they all come from? And he's, is he cheating? Because he was just that good at macroing um, and keeping his production up, etc. So um, this is going to be great. At this point in time, Oov is just starting a, a really, really nice career. Eventually he ends up winning, I think, about 10 different Star League titles in his career. Um, and But this is, he hasn't won one yet. And um, so this is his chance to prove himself. Right now, all he's done is he did get first place in a, a league called the Newcomers League, which I actually couldn't find any information about, but I'm assuming is a league for new players, basically. This is his first time in a major star league, though, in the MSL. And he's going up against this legendary Zerg player who's won, like, placed in almost every tournament for the last two years. And Oov has to go up against him. And here's a critical advantage that Oov has that is part of the story of the saga of Brood War Evolution. Oov is Boxer's protege, right? Oov is on the same team as Boxer, and he's been coached by Boxer. And, uh, you know, he ends up sometimes people call him like Boxer's son or the new, new Boxer or something like that because, because um, uh, you know, a couple of years after this, when Boxer starts to kind of uh, peter out in his power level, Oof is, is still still going strong and winning tournaments, and so he kind of takes over that mantle of being the strongest Terran, basically, from Boxer. It's very, you know, almost Star Warsian in how, like, you know, you have the the father-son type relationship, and is one more powerful than the other, and the other kind of takes over and becomes more powerful, etc. In any case, so... I'm going to stop talking about them a little bit now because the game is getting started here. But this is just, this is such an important moment for StarCraft history to have Yellow versus Oov, to have the Storm Zerg versus who will eventually be known as the Cheater Terran. And he's trying to prove himself here. He's trying to get his first Star League win. And Yellow is also trying to say, well, no, the old school, if you could have an old school, the, you know, Brood War had only been around for a, f a few years. But, um, 
Anyway, um, to give you a little bit of a, an impression of how old this game is, 2003, uh, this is a Star League which actually had Elki in it. Elki is, if I remember correctly, a Canadian player. And he, this is, I think this is the last Star League in 2003. This is the last time until modern days that um, a non-Korean was in a major star league basically in any case all right let's get into this game we got a push going out here we got some vultures running across the map yellow has built sunken colonies in order to defend against it um he's got some in his natural he, i think he has some in his main as well so these vultures may not yeah he's couple in his main as well um so he's probably going to be able to defend against this pretty decently there's yellow by the way um, yeah, he's going to be fine against these vultures. A couple sunkins in both bases is going to equal complete protection. A very different style than you'd normally see. You wouldn't normally see Zergs play four sunken colonies uh, just to handle a few vultures um, in later years in the game. But this is how, you know, this is 2003, so a different, different era of StarCraft, basically. In any case, vultures doing a little bit of harassment. They can't get any drone damage done. Uh, because of the fact that um, you know there's sunken colonies there, but he's able to do a little bit of harassment against that. The spire is complete. He's building several mutalists right now, and they are about to pop out. There they go. Um, the mutalists are obviously going to uh, force those vultures away. Um, maybe actually, I mean, at the same time, the vultures, if they can hang around, might actually keep those uh, keep those mutalists from being able to go out and do much harassment. So that's kind of a, a uh, counter disadvantage i guess um but he is going to pick off one vulture he's going to give chase there and uh, that was a really cool transition transitioning over into a camera showing the the view there in the final stadium and we do have a starport down there goliaths are already out this is so wild this is so wild to look at games from this long ago i mean you know, Medic Marine is like the way you deal with mutas and, and turrets, and that's how it's been for years. And so to see like, oh, yeah, air units, I'll get Goliaths, of course. Like, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> like it, it's just it's a little bit bizarre for me to, to realize that. Again, I actually didn't really watch very much StarCraft from this era. Uh, and there we go, some Hydralists now coming out. And that's, oh, and he's got a Valkyrie as well. What is going on? I saw the Starport earlier, and I didn't even think of that. But Valkyries are actually really good um, against Mutalists, and in combination with those Goliaths, they're going to be more than enough to hold them back. Very, very nicely done. And, you know, going Valkyries against Mutas is actually something that was not done almost ever in, like, what I'll call the Middle Ages of StarCraft, you know, the time when I was casting before, 2007 to 10, 11, 12, etc. Uh, or not, not all the way to 12, but I guess, like, 2006, 7, 8, 9. 10. Uh, very, very rarely would you see a Valkyrie. When you did, it was like, oh, that's cool. Let's see if you can pull this off. But I feel like now in like the modern day, like nowadays, if I watch people streaming, like I watch Artosa stream, for example, or other other uh, uh, semi-pro players, um, and and they make Valkyries against Mutas now. So it's, it's kind of come back into fashion. So it's kind of interesting to see how things have a little bit gone full circle. Now, Valkyries with Goliaths, don't really see though. Um, I haven't seen that in a long time. So, uh, in any case, it's a definite rarity here. He's pushing out now onto the map with a couple of Valkyries, handful of Goliaths. Sorry, I paused because my, I thought my roommates might be home or something like that. But uh, those Valkyries are going to do a good job. Now, the Valkyries probably can't just straight up defeat the Mulus, but they can weaken them a lot just by themselves. And actually, well, maybe three Valkyries might be able to defeat them. Valkyries are pretty beefy. They've got a lot of hit points, um, and three of them doing splash damage. If you can't split very well, could do tons of damage. Taking some shots there. Um, and Goliath's there to polish it off. That's the combo. The Valkyries there to do splash damage to make sure that all of the Mulus are low hit points, and then the Goliaths are there to target fire. Now, this is why you don't see Goliaths versus Mutas, because Hydralisks just destroy Goliaths. And so this is the counter-counter, is we're seeing that um, he's built a bunch of Hydralisks to kind of counter those those Goliaths, and he's going to need... And then the counter-counter-counter is tanks. If he can get those out, the tanks are going to deal with the Hydralisks. It's just all a game of rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, Hydra, Muta, Goliath, tank. It's just crazy how complicated the the back and forth strategies can be in starcraft it's amazing um doing a little bit of harassment on the oh and he baits him in with the supply depot and then goes in with the scourge takes out one valkyrie 
Um, and he's got a couple more Scourge there in waiting in order to take out any other Valkyries that approach. I don't know if um, Oof realizes that there's only a couple Scourge there. And there looks like some more family members. Oh, so many Valkyrie hits on those Mutalists. But here's the thing. Those Mutalists, he has not been making additional Mutalists. Those Mutalists have just been kind of staying alive and doing what damage they can. He made a couple Scourge to support. But um, in a moment, those Valkyries are going to be useless. Because once those Mutalists go down... Um, those Hydralists, I mean, obviously, I, <laughs> I don't know, oh, and there the rest of them go down, nice, nice targeting there, catches them, and they were all low hit points from the previous engagements, and they just go down, but now those Valkyries are, are dead weight, and that's one of the reasons why we don't see a lot of them in general in StarCraft, um, against me, is because they become dead weight, because, I don't know if you know this, if you're brand new to StarCraft, you've never seen a game before, just FYI, Valkyries can't shoot down. They can only shoot the air. So they are completely dead weight. They can they can hunt uh, overlords, I guess. That's actually a, kind of a cool thing that they can do now that they're, they've are they dispatched the meters. They can run around the map, try and hunt, hunt overlords. But it looks like he already has overlord speed, I believe. More factories going down. He is going all in with this mech play. But that's going to be fine if he can add tanks into the mix. If he adds you know, half a dozen tanks to go with those Goliaths, then he'll be completely fine against this mass Hydra. Um, of course, we do see Zerglings getting added into the mix as well, which are going to be able to, uh, you know, if they can get in close to the tanks, they'll be able to do a lot of damage. Goliath pick going and picking off a, an Overlord as well. Um, well, now those Goliaths are going to pay for it. They got a couple pot shots on the Overlord, but now they're going down. And uh, so some more Scourge go down. But again, these Valkyries are not going to be able to do too much at, at this point. Um, Hydralis moving in here. There is one tank. He's got a nice spot on top of that ramp. The command center being built in a spot where it can be floated down to the new base. But in the meantime, it's using uh, its, its position is able to kind of block there as well. So um, Mass Hydras. Uh, we're going to see if he switches back up now that he's seen a tank. And now, I mean, he knows that the tanks are kind of have to be produced. Whoa, that is four, four machine shops. He is going for a lot of tanks. Did this Scourge just land into him? I think the Scourge just attacked the barracks. I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, in any case, um, yeah, so lots of Hydras to the map. We're going to see if he transitions out of Hydras, though. But crucially, Yellow has a lot of bases. Um, at this point, it's hard to see exactly on the mini-map. I think Uv is getting his third base up right now. And Yellow has, I believe, three bases and is looking to get a fourth maybe so we'll see uh, uh, how exactly that goes um in any case lots of hydros on the map i'm really curious to see if he's going to do something different uh now that he has these tanks out if he's going to switch up get some zerglings maybe uh try and go switch back into meters okay so there's the hive going down hive tech is going to be his answer for this um not sure exactly what he's going to get with the hive tech um but uh going for a different tech route is probably a better strategy than um than just, you know, trying to get more Hydralists. And, I mean, you need something to go along with the Hydras if you're going to stick with these Hydras. He does have a lot of them, though. He has tons of Hydralists. I mean, you can see a large clump of them moving across the north of the map. Looks like a couple dozen. And this base at the top right is actually completely exposed. And Yellow has taken a roundabout route. There's one tank there. It's not completely exposed, but it's mostly exposed. He's taken a roundabout route around the top of the map to a position that he couldn't get to. And this is just a shooting gallery, but he's not shooting. He's not shooting. Oh, he had an opportunity to take out the SCVs, but he tries to go for the command center instead. Um, and it looks like he is going to get the command center. Oof decided to counterattack. He says, all of your Hydras are out attacking my base. I'm going to move into your base instead. I know it looks like the command center did die. Um, but in the meantime, Oof is going to come in here and probably take out a hatchery at the same time. He's got a lot of Scourge. Interesting. Yellow has a lot of Scourge. I wonder if he's planning on going for a mass Scourge attack against those Valkyries and then switching back up into Mutas or even Guardians might be an option here. Um... We haven't seen what hive tech he's going to be teching into at this point, but yes, a, a hatchery is going to go down. So tit for tat there. Hatchery goes down in exchange for the command center. Um, I think that's uh, probably going to be okay for yellow. He's trying to get another base up over here. He's got one in the bottom right as well. Um, I don't think he lost very many drones there. Now, can he control the map though? That's the crucial thing here. He can afford to lose that base if he can continue to control the map. These hydralists are coming down here to protect that top left base. Um, Scourge looks like getting attacked by... Um, Goliaths as well. There's just Hydras all over the place in these small clumps, but he doesn't have a united army with that can fight this this mass of tanks. And Uv is taking advantage of that. He's he's taking out that base, and now he's pushing into the next base uh, towards the main. 
And he's pushing in here. A lot of Hydralis. Now there's a nice little choke point there. He needs to get those tanks sieged up. He gets in close enough. He picks off Goliath, Goliath, but then doesn't target fire down the tanks. And the tanks just absolutely obliterate the Hydralisks. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this is game one of this series. But if uh, Oov wins this, like I said, this is a huge upset. And it looks like he's about to. Oov is um, this newcomer to the Star Leagues. Yellow has been placing high in almost every Star League for the last couple years. And it looks like Oov, just with his Cheater Terran style, macroing tons of tanks and Goliaths. Tons and tanks of Goliaths. It looks like he's going to accomplish things here. Overlord's coming in. He's dropping Hydralis on top of the tanks, forcing them to unsiege. But it doesn't even matter. There's just not enough. Now, if he'd done that at the same time as attacking with his other Hydralis, it might have been effective. But there's too many units there. Too many tanks. And I think this is going to be the end for Yellow. Um, Oof has just done so, so much. Um, and I think he might be down to just one base, actually, Oof. But um, he's got too much of an army. He's in there attacking the main base. The Hive goes down. Lurkers are running across the map, getting picked off before they can even burrow. I'm not even sure if uh, Yellow ever got any hive tech out. He built the hive, but then it was he never actually did anything with it. And, uh, wow, these tanks are going to shell the natural. That's all he had left mining, and that is GG. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Nicely done by Oov. And you could see there that just, like, this is the beginning of Oov, right? Um, just kind of just out outclassing yellow basically in a way um yellow uh just not able to keep up the amount of units that were built and we saw for a minute it was like okay wow he has a ton of hydros and there was a moment there where i think he had enough hydros if he'd gone on the offensive and when he had you know a, a dozen more than a dozen hydros and oof just had one tank and a handful of goliaths if he'd maybe been able to accomplish more at that point in time he might have been able to take more control of the map, but, you know, I mean, we did see that he did try to do that, and Oov had choke points, and he had one tank behind the Goliaths and behind the command center, so uh, Yellow wasn't able to take advantage of that. Now, if the Terran is, is bunkered up, um, and you've got more units, better units, what do you do? You take more of the map. Yellow did exactly that, but he just couldn't keep up with the amount of units that, I um, mean, we saw Oov put down, what do you have, like seven factories with like four or five um uh, machine shops just producing tons and tons of units uh, just ridiculous and um, you know I think if we'd maybe seen a tech switch earlier maybe a switch back into Metalisks or something like that um, we could have seen uh, Yellow prevail but he just wasn't able to do it in time so anyways I'm going to stop rambling now um, hope you guys enjoyed that very much uh, I did it's very cool to see some well I say some new players actually older players but some new to me players and maybe new to you as well and some really, really old school classic games from uh, Star League Finals from 2003. Very, very cool. And I guess before I close out here, I am going to um, just spoil the rest of this series for you. So what I'll do is I'll, I don't think I'm going to be able to cast them, but uh, I did find some VODs, I think, for the uh, Korean uh, VODs of the rest of the games of this series. So I'll put links to those games in the video description. So if you don't want to be spoiled and you just want to watch those, go check out the links down there. Um, and uh, you can watch the rest of the match. But if you don't mind and you want to be spoiled, then I will let you know that Oov does go on to win this series and take his first Star League championship. And it will be the first of several over the next few years for him. And uh, he ends up becoming a coach and just being a, a, a general uh, big name in StarCraft over the next several years. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.